What's up everybody, Tyler here with Outboard Specialty and today we're messing with batteries and cables. We're going through the age old question of how to quickly diagnose bad battery or bad cables or bad everything. So let's check it out. So here we got a two battery bank, house and cranking, running through our uh, battery switch here, Blue C Systems I think, yeah. Um, and so we're testing because he's got real sluggish start on the motor. So. I got um, kill switch lanyard out. I'm just trying to activate the starter here. As you can see, we got nothing. So let's start checking stuff out. Okay, so I'm just load testing batteries real quick. I'm going through both of these. Um, the house battery um, already load tested out at full volts, full amps. It looks kind of rough. Definitely needs to be sitting in that tray a little better, obviously. But it looks, uh, that one tested out good. So here I got my load tester set up on cranking. And we should be pulling, let's see what we got here. This one's rated for a thousand cold. So we should be seeing somewhere in that ballpark with thousand amps. I use an old school tester that gets really hot and you can cook stuff on it. Because if the battery's in good shape, it starts smoking. So right now we're sustaining about 800 amps. Just a whiff of smoke coming off the tester. Pops right back up to 12 volts when I take the load off of it. All right, so on the battery side, we're good. Um, we're gonna assume the switch is good for now. Let's jump over to the motor and see what we got on the motor. One of the other things we're doing here is we're checking for a voltage drop. So I got a um, meter hooked up to the same battery I just load tested, which load tested great. Let's put a load on it and see what happens. You can see voltage is dropping down pretty low right there. It looks like it bottomed out at about 10, 10 and some change. Let's see what we got on the motor. Okay. So we got, we're connected up to hot and ground on the motor where the cables bolt in to the block and the starter. 12.3 um, with no load on anything. Now let's put a load on it with the starter and just see what she does. Okay, so you can see right there that voltage dropped off to about two and some change. Let's hit that again. Yeah, so somewhere between the battery and there, we're dropping about 10, 8 to 10 volts trying to actuate the starter motor. So we know we got a problem in here somewhere. So the next steps, we're gonna take a look at the back of the switch, see if the switch is fried. I suspect the cables are fried, which is not unusual. Um, cables do go. And uh, especially if they've sustained some electrical damage in the past. Um, so uh, yeah, let's just tear into the innards and see what we got. Okay, so taking our battery switch loose here and I'm just checking leads coming into the battery. So I'm, I mean into the battery switch. So I'm looking right now, I got a meter lead hot on one of the battery incoming leads on the input side of the switch. And here you can see the output side of the switch. It's got your Yamaha hot, uh, that's your main engine cable. It's also got your house power coming off of it right there. This is a really simplified system obviously, but they're both coming off the common stud there. So let's see what we got here, just checking it. Let's set it to both. There we go. Now we'll get some change. Okay, got a little bit of a drop there. Now let's see what that drop was. About a volt and some change. Let's see what we got on the output side of our switch. So I'm going to jump our lead over to our common stud. Let's see right there. So our lead is now hooked onto the same stud that our battery hot uh, motor cable was hooked to. Let's see what we got here. Uh, a little bit of a drop, not crazy. Uh, if this was in my shop, I would just go ahead and put shop cables on it and jump everything um, straight off the batteries direct to the motor. But since we're trying to do something useful for the general public here, Let's, uh, we're going to go ahead and unload the motor main cables on the mountain zoo we got. So, unhooked our 12V main from our battery switch. This is your Yamaha cable, part of the motor. 
just oming this baby out. Unhooked over here, completely unloaded, no juice going to anything. As you can see, we're at dead on continuity. It's it's saying this thing ohms out fine. I'm doubting that. Let's check the ground side. Okay, we got a multi more multimeter leaders on here now. So that is uh, connected one end of it to the ground stud, which is connected directly to the battery main ground on the cranking battery. Other end is here. Zero ohms. Continuity. Now one last little test. Okay. Now I have reconnected our Yamaha battery main to the common set on our battery switch. Set it to both. So that cable is hot. Still got my meter testing continuity on the ground side of the battery cable, which is right here. And I hooked up my little load tester because I want to put an amp draw on these cables and see what we get. So as you can see right now, we're at 12 volts and some change on the, just looking at what's on the end of the cables. Let's go ahead and load this thing up. It's telling me continuity, but it's giving me 500 ohms. I'm testing on the hot side. You can see our battery switch is taking some damage here. That stud looks like it's kind of been blown off by some sort of surge by the way. All right, so we got our voltage here. Why am I using a cheap meter? Because you do run the risk of blowing one of these meters to pieces um, by doing this kind of testing. So checking the hot sides of the cable, putting an amp draw on it, see what we got. First of all, our amps drop off. Our voltage drops off, sorry. You can see voltage is just going through the floor. We got continuity with no load. Now let's put a load on that hot side. Looks like we've lost continuity. So, um, definitely Ohm's Law is implicated in here somewhere. I don't go that deep with it. Math was never my big thing in life. Um, but what I am gonna do is go ahead and fabricate a new set of cables and see if we get a better result. And shut this thing up. Okay, all oh, so hard to see in here, but I went ahead and replaced our number one and number two jumpers coming off our cranking in house batteries. Replaced our main ground jumper that's going from battery to battery. Fabricated a new set of uh, mains for the motor, connected those up. So the old one's been de rigged. So this is our newly fabricated cables right here. You can see, you just routed them back through. A little bit of derig here, just you know, unbolt some stuff real careful, and uh, then just ran it back through into here, right under our splash well here, and you can see where we're going. So now let's go ahead and load test this stuff and see how she does. So I'm checking continuity again. I got our hot side of our meter connected up to battery main where it's connected to the start relay. I'm gonna go ahead and connect on to our hot cable battery main coming off of common stud on our battery switch. Got our battery switch set to both. As you can hear right now we got continuity. So let's see how our resistance testing does when we put a load on it. Actuate the starter. Obviously, it obviously sounds a ton better. You can hear the starter's actually behaving normal. And our resistance, looks like our max value resistance there uh, jumped up to about two or 300 ohms, which is down from uh, 1800 to 2000 ohms. But more importantly, the starter sounds great. Now before I smoke this meter completely, 
Go ahead and shut that down. So now all I'm doing is putting our housing back on our battery switch, bolt it into place, test out our motors, our chip, test out our motor. Go ahead and shut that off for now. Um, so I also redid our house. That uh, looks like a 10 gauge or 12 gauge um, going to our house. Um, fuse assembly right there. We're just powering up our panel. Last thing we're doing here is just with all of our new cabling, gonna run the motor briefly and make sure the uh, charger on the motor is pushing juice to the batteries. So we're gonna wanna see voltage jumping up here a little bit. Got us up to about 13 volts. Um, just wanted to spin it off real quick and make sure we're charging. All that stuff looks good. Tyler Holland, Outboard Specialty Tools. Hope y'all have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, battery cables, battery problems, battery switches. The cables fail a lot more than you think. So definitely check them out whenever you're having issues and your batteries look like they're doing good and they're testing good.